It's delightful to be here today with Jens Nielsen from NetBooster. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Thank okay. you for having me. And it's kind of not that long ago since the New Year. Did you have a good Christmas and New Year? Wonderful. Very nice. Cozy with a bit of hooker, Danish hooker in, uh, in front of the fireplace. So that was very nice. What does hooker mean? It's kind of hard to define, but hygge is uh, described as when you're sitting in the couch with your blanket around you, uh, candle lights, sipping tea, uh, fireplace, uh, this kind of just relaxed on a Sunday afternoon and it's dark outside and a bit cold. And as it's going to snow in, in London, hope, well, perhaps this weekend, maybe that's what we all need to be doing, a little bit of hooker. So the big news story of the week, really, for us at least, has been Snapchat opening its headquarters in London, its non-US headquarters. Why do you think they decided to go for London instead of Europe or Ireland? Well, I think they, uh, I mean, first of all, a lot of American companies, when they're coming to Europe, they choose London. Uh, London is the place where all a lot of big companies, global brands, have their headquarters. European headquarter, so that's where the advertisers are, that's where Snap should be. Uh, it's also a place where there's a, a lot of young people, they are a very multicultural uh, environment, uh, so they, they have a lot of talent they can they can acquire here, and uh, and also the audience is, is very much a, a Snapchat audience that they have around here. So uh, I love a bit of Snapchat. <laughs> exactly, we all do, and uh, my, my children do as well, but I, I even get some snaps every, every now and then, so uh, <laughs> it's, 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 a big, uh, it's a big thing, and uh, London is a world city, and it's, it's the city in Europe if you want to be seen as a global a global brand so uh, i know that some of the other uh, tech companies are maybe choosing other places like dublin or uh, paris or munich but um, they have different i think uh, then criteria for choosing that one could be tax one could be other things but uh, and the access to uh, engineering people and so on but for snap i think this is the right choice talking about the Gen Z's as well that Snap appeals to so much. Millwood, uh, Cantar Millwood Brown even, has released their findings on Gen Z. Did you find them surprising? Anything stand out for you? <coughs> well, I think not really because nothing has changed in my view. I think communication has always and will always be happening on the terms of the receiver. So if I'm saying something to you, and I'm not expressing myself in the way that you understand. All communication is happening on the terms of the receiver. So uh, what advertisers have to do uh, and rea in reaction to this is to understand what are the terms of the receiver, the target audience that they want to communicate to. That's always been like that. And then they have to adjust their communication uh, to that. The, the, the challenge this time around, you can say, is that this is very much technology driven what's happening in the moment in terms of uh, and the, this generation is very much reachable only by new technologies and channels that mm. older brands uh, who are managed by maybe an older generation of, of, of business orientated people they are not uh, they don't know how to exactly how to react to that and how to meet their audience uh, with their channels uh, which is something you can see from big brands such as Estee Lauder and Nestle that they can see their old audience is fading and they are struggling a little bit to get in touch and in communication with, with, the, with the new generation coming up uh, and, and meaning that they, they do lose market share and they need to activate technology in order to uh, with creativity and content in order to create this one-to-one -one engagement with the, with the generation set or X or even so this is uh, nothing has changed but uh, in terms of communication but the way you reach your target audience in that generation uh, set is is totally different and you need to re you need to understand how to do it and these companies that I mentioned before such as Estee Lauder and Nestle they have uh, initiated what they call reverse mentoring programs which means that young people in the companies are mentoring the senior management in how to react to, to this changing environment. I think that's a very clever thing. Mm. First of all, for the senior management to admit that this is necessary, and secondly, to orchestrate it and, and, and structure it so that they learn from, from this generation that they actually need to communicate to. Yeah. It's smart. No, definitely. Um, and it's good, it makes resource of what you've got already in the company as well, doesn't it? Um, another report that's come out this week, TMT, I noticed that you've got some 
pretty strong opinions on some of the findings from that. Yeah, well, uh, of course, there's a lot of talk about uh, uh, flow TV uh, viewing is going down. We all know that. Uh, um, but there's, uh, you know, I don't think TV as a media at all is a, is a dying breed. Uh, it's still a very popular media and it's going to be a very important uh, branding and communication media going forward as well. The thing is that as it becomes more and more digital, we just need to view it as just another device. Uh, and it's just part of a digital uh, branding and communication program or strategy that, that now you can do TV a little bit now, but even more in the future with digital TV, one-to-one -one, uh, uh, commercials. You can even transform, uh, you know, there's technology available that can take, if you're watching TV, the advertisers know that you have your smartphone in your hands. So as soon as there's commercials coming on, on Flow TV, there's a signal being transmitted to your to your smartphone and it's activating a one-to-one -one commercial that's coming to your smartphone. So you, you can't really escape the advertisers that way. So uh, so that's that's uh, that's really important. And, and th so TV in the future is going to be an integrated part of the overall marketing and communication strategy. I'm deliberately not saying digital because everything is digital yeah. anyway. Perhaps surprising winner at this year's Golden Globes, it's the awards season, has been Netflix coming out with The Crown, which has just swept the board really, hasn't it? I mean, do you think that's, do you find that surprising that they're taking on the typical TV channels? No, it's, I don't think it's, it's, it's not surprising. We've seen that streaming uh, TV is, is taking over. We've seen a doubling of YouTube viewing on television sets uh, in 2016. Is Chromecast is bringing uh, smartphones onto the TV screen, so it's, ba it's basically a, a new media. Uh, again, uh, of course, it's viewed much more by the younger generations, but it's the new way of entertainment uh, alongside cinema movies, uh, movies on, on on the television as well. And it speaks volumes of their production quality as well. Yeah, and obviously these the the, the producers behind it, uh, Amazon uh, for one, is uh, have enormous uh, resources, financial resources behind them. They can now start invest into having world famous actors. They have uh, big set settings, and they so they can actually uh, produce some fantastic quality, and that's taken on the whole new generation of uh, TV viewers uh, that are just putting uh, streamed uh, services uh, and series into the television set. No, I think this trend is going to be uh, much more and more and more. Uh, there's a lot of streaming. I think you'll have YouTube stars now uh, coming onto the TV screens as well. You will have uh, uh, more and more uh, stars that are born out of this media that yeah. will start receiving rewards, whereas we've seen so far is maybe the old film stars that are moving into the, uh, to the streaming. Uh, so th it will create a lot of new stars that uh, we haven't seen or heard of. Well, thanks very much for having a chat to us, and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me.